you want the one who prefer Mocha Tracker over the Silhouette Planner Tracker, we have great news for you. Silhouette 2023.5 includes several improvements to the tracking system, allowing you to make fewer clicks and save time while still getting the job done. Imagine you are working on a shot that has a bunch of things that need to be tracked. It doesn't necessarily have to be screens, it could be any surface or object, I just picked this clip for the most obvious demo. So, up until now, only one active layer could be tracked with Mocha Tracker. So, if you had multiple objects to track, your work process probably looked like this. You would either start by drawing a shape around the first object, then go to the tracker, track it till the end, then draw another shape, go back to the tracker again, and repeat that process until you're done with all the objects. Or you would draw a bunch of shapes first, and then just monotonously track each layer one by one. Pretty annoying, huh? Let me show you a new way how you can tackle this. For a clear demo, I would delete this rotor node that contains the track data and start from scratch. I would create five new shapes, one for each screen, and then assign each one to its own layer. Now, when I head over to Mocha Tracker, before I start tracking, I would select all the layers by holding the Shift key, so that I can now track them all at once. All the shapes are now being tracked simultaneously, following each screen accordingly. Since we have 5 screens here, we cut the tracking time by about 5 times. Isn't that awesome? I have my assets already prepped here, so I would drag them into the node graph, and now it's just a matter of spending some time aligning the inserts and making it look better. I used the fire hue saturation and brightness effect to change the color of the assets and turn them into something more greenish. Once they were all the same color, I used cross processing node to match the black point between the insert and the dark areas of the source clip. Finally, I added Sapphire Ultra Glow effect at the bottom of the node tree to add a subtle glow to the screens. And here's what I came up with. If you're an attentive viewer, you may also have noticed a new checkbox in the tracking parameters called Tracked Subtracted Layers. It can be found in both Mocha and regular Planner Tracker tabs. It is enabled by default and it does exactly what it says. It allows you to track layers that are set to subtract blend mode or, in other words, that has an alpha of zero. And what does it give us in terms of the tracking process? Occlusions are something that happen a lot in our tracking life, and there are a couple of ways to deal with them. When tracking an object with an obstacle in the foreground, a typical approach is to first create and track shape for the occluding object, and only after you have done that, you can then use those shapes as an exclusion mat to track the main subject. Another approach would involve animating the tracking shape and moving it around to avoid the obstacle. But this is also not the most straightforward workflow and requires manual keyframing. What I'm trying to say is that you could not track both the main object and the occlusion layers at the same time. Well, with the Silhouette 2023.5 release, now you can. This new parameter greatly complements the multiple layer tracking and makes a good combo. Now that you can track subtracted layers, the process for handling these types of shots would best follow. So, say I need to track this cabinet on a background. Although I can easily avoid this hood and the lamp, it would probably be better to create a separate subtraction shape for the lady, since she moves and partially covers the cabinet, and I don't want to spend time manually animating the shape or tracking just a small area of it. So let me grab an elliptical tool and create a garbage mat around her head and the shoulder. I would put these two shapes in one layer and call that Lady. Then I need to create another one for the cabinet. I would just avoid the hood and the lamp and draw my shape like this. This one should be assigned to a separate layer. 
I'd call it cabinet and place it below the ladies layer. Now here is the important step. In order to get a proper track, the occlusion layer should be set to subtract. So I click on the ladies layer and choose subtract blending mode here in the drop down menu. Now everything is ready to be tracked. So I head over to tracker and all I have to do is select both of the layers, make sure that the track subtracted layers checkbox is enabled, which it should be by default and just click track. Don't worry that shapes are jumping around a bit. This is because you have drift compensation enabled in preferences and you don't see the final result yet. Once tracking is over, those small jumps are averaged out. As you can see, not only the lady's shape are used as an exclusion mat to prevent it from affecting the cabinet track, but the top subtracted layer is also being tracked. In a simple words, we hit two birds with one stone. Now if I enable the surface, align the center of it over this handle and play the clip, you can see that we have a good track that was not affected by the obstacle and we track both layers in one go. I would bring in another roto note with precise shapes that I have already prepared and assemble a simple comp with the checkerboard for the demo. And that's about it on the tracking side. These great workflow improvements can make a huge impact on reducing your tracking time and streamlining your workflow. Let us know what you think in the comments. If that was helpful, give us a like and subscribe to our socials to not miss a thing. My name is Elizabeth Postel for Boris Facts. See you in the next one.